Did you know that TF2 was one of the first games ever with official virtual reality support? Valve added VR mode to the game all the way back in 2013 to work with the then still in development Oculus Rift. The most expensive TF2 item ever sold is around $30,000. This includes 28,000 real dollars direct via PayPal. In the extremely early second trailer released for the game, most of the classes are given what appear to be official catchphrases or mottos, with NGs being I like to make things, snipers being pink clouds of death, and scouts too much caffeine. In the early stages of TF2's design, the art style was at one point planned to be claymation, with characters exploding into clumps of clay upon death, before these plans were scrapped and the so-called painterly look was settled on. Despite their visual sizes, characters do not have different weights. Although Heavy does have a personal hidden stat of 50% knockback resistance, but otherwise Scout, Soldier and everyone else are all influenced by knockback sources like Air Blast the exact same amount. In the Meet the Heavy video, we see writing on Heavy's bullets that says Supercalibre Fragile Ballistic, an apparent reference to Mary Poppins' Supercalifragilistic Expialidocious. And yes, I can say that really long Welsh town name, which I will at the end. You might know that TF2 originally released as part of a game collection called The Orange Box on PC, but did you know that it also simultaneously launched on Xbox 360 and a month later on PS3? And believe it or not, the game remains in the top 5 highest rated Xbox 360 games of all time on review aggregation site Metacritic. Sniper's voice actor is married to Administrator's voice actor in real life. Fortress is actually a codename for our particular group of mercenaries. Team Fortress in effect means a team whose name is Fortress. In the comics we also hear about a Team Vanguard, a Team Echelon and a Team Citadel. All bullet based weapons can destroy laid stickies, but so can pyro secondary weapons like the detonator and the scorch shot. TF2 has experienced many bizarre glitches over the years, like for a couple of hours it was possible to paint a certain weapon, the cow mangler. At least six painted cow manglers still exist today. There was another glitch, albeit more of an exploit, that allowed a player to create for themselves a completely one of a kind weapon, the deflector. Whilst this is visually identical to the heavy's minigun, it is actually a weapon with its entirely own stats, otherwise only available to the robots in MVM mode. The weirdest glitch item however that I've ever seen is the Team Fortress 2 upgrade to premium. Now this is not the regular premium upgrade which looks like this. It doesn't even have the same name. It's not the same picture, and only one of this particular thing is known to exist, and no one quite knows how it happened. TF2 wasn't always free to play, and it actually cost $20 on Steam for the first four years of its life. When the game went free to play in 2011, its players increased by a factor of five. In other words, if TF2 had 20,000 players, that grew to 100,000 players practically overnight. You definitely know that TF2 is a bot problem, but did you know that this problem is so extreme that it actually significantly skews TF2's data that we literally don't know how many real players the game has? With that said, TF2's peak player count is over 250,000 concurrent players, which was reached in July 2023, over 15 years after its initial release. Regardless of the debate about exactly how many of those players might be bots, TF2 remains incredibly popular despite its advanced age in a landscape of otherwise regularly dying live service games. Sniper is not Australian, he's actually from New Zealand, which in the Team Fortress universe exists at the bottom of the ocean in a giant glass dome. MVM Uber Canteen's affect engineer Sentry Gun. Whilst they don't make it invincible, they do grant 90% damage reduction. The Space Age Dr. Grodbort weapons were actually created in partnership with Weta Workshop, perhaps best known for their special effects work on the Lord of the Rings films, who in turn partnered with concept designer Greg Broadmoor, who created the Dr. Grodbort universe. As a result, Many of Dr. Grodbort's guns exist physically in real life as incredibly high quality replica models. The most viewed TF2 video ever is Rise of the Epic Scout by Crash Mall with over 91 million views. Canonically, Spy is all but confirmed as Scout's father, even going so far as to dress him as son in a near death experience. You can technically detonate stickies one by one, lay all eight and then simply fire. Your first laid sticky will now explode. Not get deleted, but actually detonate doing damage, just as if you had manually selected that one and only that one to blow up. There are over 3,000 unique items in Team Fortress 2, and this number is constantly growing, as tens of new community contributed items are still added multiple times a year. Of those items, at least 1,400 are community contributed, meaning that they were made by a TF2 fan like you or me, and then they were officially selected to be added to the game. The original Team Fortress game was a mod for Quake, all the way back in 1996. Valve saw the mod and liked it so much that they employed the entirety of the then Australian development team and moved them over to America, 
to work on a version of Team Fortress in the then in development Half-Life engine. This means that Team Fortress 2 is actually the fourth official Team Fortress game. There was the Quake mod, then there was Team Fortress on the Half-Life engine, which is today known as Team Fortress Classic. But then the original TF2 was a game called TF2 Brotherhood of Arms, which never released. They went back to the drawing board, and then finally, in 2007 they released the version of TF2 that we know today. Despite no direct esports support from Valve, TF2 has always had and continues to have a thriving competitive scene run by the community, with multiple leagues and divisions running in every region, still actively, such as Oz Fortress, RGL, and ETF2L, which alone is in its 47th season. The administrator, the omnipresent commanding voice in game and the old woman pulling the strings in the official story, is at least 150 years old. The reason Demo Man's default grenade launcher has six chambers is because it originally held six grenades in a clip before being reduced to four. The model was never updated to reflect this. The Team Fortress developers once created a one-of-a-kind hat for Notch, the creator of Minecraft, after what was essentially a joke on Twitter about no one believing who he was when he was playing the game. There are actually multiple one-of-a-kind items in addition to the top notch. Three of these were rewards for a contest in 2010. Three of them are special temporary hats with a very unique mechanic of automatically changing player every single day. And there's even a set of hats awarded to winners of a Dota 2 beta tournament in 2011, which may technically be zero of a kind, as these players never appear to have opened their TF2 backpacks. Robin Walker, one of TF2's original lead developers shipped over from Australia, has gone on to have a very successful career at Valve, and he was one of the project leads on Half-Life Alex. Many former top TF2 players and competitive commentators have gone on to lead successful careers, often in the professional esports world, such as Brennan Sideshow in Valorant, and Super in Overwatch, who won both the World Cup and the yearly championship twice with his team. Some of TF2's most in-depth character lore comes from two unlikely places, a never-released set of official trading cards and the back of their official NECA action figure boxes. It's in these sources that we learn that Medic apparently has no formal medical training. However, in the Meet the Medic short, he talks about losing his medical license. This has led to some confusion over whether he really is a doctor or simply just a mister, as he is referred to by the devil when he meets him in the comics. What's even more confusing, however, is the truth about Demoman's parents, whose trading card, action figure box, and website blurb all directly contradict how they died. And on top of this, his very much alive mother features prominently in the comics. So it remains unclear just exactly which version of the story is the realist. Random crits are not actually random. The more damage you do, the more likely you are to deal a crit. And melee weapons have an even higher chance to deal random crits again, with the max damage multiplier taking your melee crit percentage up to 60%. In addition to critical hits, there are also critical heals, although these aren't random at all. Instead, heals get exponentially faster the more time has passed since the heal target has received damage with heal rate actually being three times faster after 25 seconds. The wave on the Rescue Ranger will grow and shrink relative to how much metal the player is carrying. We know about a lot of in-development and cut game content from simply looking at the game files. For example, MVM at one point had a blimp or an airship in development. There was an entire major update called the NG vs Spy update that never ended up getting released, and there was even an additional building for the engineer called the Repair Node, which allowed Engineer to repair his buildings remotely. Valve have released, completely for free, the movie-making software used to create the Meet the Team shorts called Source Filmmaker. The community has used this software to create a near endless amount of incredible short films. Pyro's gender, race, or even species has never been officially revealed, and is often teased as female, and sometimes teased as not even being human. You probably know that some characters are slow walkers, and some are fast. But did you know that there are actually five different move speeds? Pyro, Engineer, and Sniper all move at standard speed, 100%. Spy and Medic move slightly faster at 107%. Demoman, slightly slower at 93%. Soldier, slower again at 80%. And Heavy, of course, the slowest of all, at 77%. Medic can actually assist his own deaths by healing an enemy spy. The box trot for Spy has Japanese writing on it. This text roughly translates to, the spy is in this box. There have been over 750 individual TF2 updates released. Many of the playable characters' voice actors have been and remain active in the community, collaborating with YouTubers like Shork, and have even recreated many famous SFM videos in real-life skits. Abraham Lincoln is a surprisingly frequent Team Fortress Universe side character, implied as being the original Red Team Pyro, and even credited with inventing the staircase in 1857. Disguising a spy does not change your hitbox to the class you're disguised as, 
but you can use that to your advantage as certain classes like the Scout and Heavy's heads are in completely different positions to spies, where your hitboxes actually are. Including all taunt, weapon and cosmetic unusuals, there are now over 400 different unusual effects in the game. TF2 was one of the first ever Steam games with official Mac OS support, releasing just one month after Steam itself on Mac. There is an officially endorsed TF2 mod for the virtual reality game Hot Dogs, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades called Meat Fortress, which is active to this day, in which you can play a relatively accurate full recreation of TF2 in VR. A wet spy is a visible spy. This includes Gerati, Mad Milk and even bleed effects such as those applied by the Tribal Mun Shiv. But it also includes water, regular old water. So if you're on a water map as spy and go swimming, just remember to dry off first. Unlike in a lot of modern shooting games, reloads are 100% interruptible by shooting in Team Fortress 2, no matter what stage of the reload you are at, meaning that there's almost no reason to not enable the auto reload setting, unless you find it distracting. There are 12 different item qualities in the game. That's the technical name for why certain items have different colors. You all know normal, strange, and unusual. But did you know about Haunted, Community, and even Valve quality? Valve quality weapons are very special developer weapons which only Valve staff can use in game, such as the Valve rocket launcher, whose stats are this. Yep, that isn't edited. And Valve devs even occasionally pull out these items in charity tournaments to show that yes, they really are real. TF2 developers officially cite Studio Ghibli's Miyazaki as a source of inspiration for certain techniques used when creating the in-game textures. In the past, TF2 community members made entire updates themselves. Not just the in-game content submitted to the workshop, but fully organized and coordinated all the content and even created the elaborate website update pages. Such updates include the Robot Boogaloo, End of the Line, and Invasion. Despite being one of the main characters in the comics, there is almost zero lore ever revealed about Miss Pauling. No first name, no age, basically nothing. We know even more about the super mysterious administrator than we do Miss Pauling. An enemy spy disguised as a spy will always be wearing a disguise. So if you see an undisguised friendly spy, they are 100% guaranteed to be a friendly. And similarly, if an enemy spy is disguised as a class who no one on your team is actively playing, the game will pick a random player's name to copy but that spy will have no loadout, so always be especially careful around teammates with fully default items equipped. A game with as many items as TF2 obviously has plenty of pop culture references, such as the Doctor Woe representing Matt Smith's Doctor Who bow tie, the Starboard Crusader, a nod to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and the Plumber's Cap, definitely not related to any lawsuit happy Japanese video game giant. My personal favorite, however, is Your Eternal Reward, being a reference to Disney's Aladdin. Yes, the one and only Disney's Aladdin. I don't know what you're talking about. TF2 can be credited with popularizing a lot of now extremely common game mechanics, such as cosmetic items in non-cosmetic based games like shooters, the general idea of substantially different classes in shooters, and, as much as it pains me to admit it, loot boxes. TF2 was even one of the earliest shooter games to feature regular collaborations with other developers' games in the form of crossover items. So take that, Fortnite. Over the years, the TF2 community has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charities, and continues to do so, with the long-running but now-retired Tip of the Hats charity event alone raising over $1.3 million. Valve themselves have also contributed to charity directly, such as by granting many cancer patients make-a-wish wishes over the years, including creating a special 101st Golden Wrench, and even creating one-of-a-kind impossible unusuals like the double unusual spine-chilling skull and many community charity events continue to run to this day, such as the TF2 Map 72 Hour Jam, Pineapple TF's custom MVM operations, and the TF Connect charity variety shows. There's a hidden portrait in the Map Man Manor, which appears to show the administrator, or a relative, in a somewhat amorous pose. The portrait being hidden away suggests it might have belonged to the house's previous owner, Zephaniah Man. What this means or doesn't mean for their relationship is open to interpretation. The sentry gun's beeps actually represent its current level. Moby Frankie, the original art lead on Team Fortress 2, went on to be art director on Riot Games' Valorant. The original is called the original because it is based on the rocket launcher from Quake, the original game upon which Team Fortress is based. Similarly, the classic is called the classic 
because it is mechanically similar to the sniper's primary weapon in Team Fortress Classic. Two Fort is the name of the town where TF2's events actually play out. You can extinguish teammates on fire with the Sydney Sleeper. All of Heavy's miniguns have official names. The default minigun is named Sasha, the Brass Beast is named Oksana, the Hulong Heater is named Sheila, and the Tomislav is named Svetlana. Interestingly, Natasha has a different Slavic name in the game files, Ludmila. A form of cheating called idling was once so rampant in TF2 that Valve actually decided it was easier to reward players who didn't cheat than it was to punish all of the players who were. There are near countless TF2 cameos in other completely independent games and franchises, like Heavy playing poker in Poker Night, The Scout in Fall Guys, and Pyro in Sega's answer to Mario Kart. TF2's very first lore release included this torn up family photo. Despite 15 years having passed, the person cut off in the picture has still never been officially revealed. While some people think it must be Grey Man, this would directly contradict Redmond and Blue Tark not knowing who Grey is in the Blood Brothers comic. Either way, Valve has only ever revealed two sides of the photo, but the middle remains a mystery. The payload moves increasingly faster with one, two, or three players pushing it, but not anymore. So if there are three or 33 players pushing, it's still going the same speed. Valve once accidentally released a bug to the game that gave Unusuals a 100% unbox rate, completely crushing the in-game market for a weekend. For context, the intended Unusual unbox rate is less than 1%. How the community have voted or played the game has directly influenced what updates later got released to the game. For example, the gunboats were given to the winner of the Soldier vs Demo Man War, meaning there's a reality where Demo Man was the one with the improved blast jumping tools all these years. There was also the Heavy vs Pyro War, dictating an entire future update, which ended up being Jungle Inferno, meaning there's another reality where Heavy wins and we're all here playing with the hypothetical Siberian Jungle update as our latest Valve made memory. The coordinates administrator tells Pauling to meet her at in the comic Old Wounds are real and lead to a spot in the New Mexico mountains known as the Organ Needle. New Mexico is the state where TF2 is set. Blast jumping as soldier or demo man mechanics are so complex that they are effectively a game in their own right, with thousands of community created assault course maps specifically designed for jumping through. There's even a bunch of hidden mechanics uniquely useful for jump courses like sea tapping, pogos, sinking, speed shots, edge bugging, and even more. Despite a lack of updates, no official end to development has ever been announced. There's a special non-obtainable from unboxing unusual effect called Community Sparkle, reserved only for a small handful of niche use cases, most commonly by creating an item which Valve select to add to the game. One item that can still be obtained with the Community Sparkle effect is the Wiki Cap, a unique hat awarded to dedicated contributors of the game's official wiki. I think that's pretty damn cool. There are official concept designs of female mercs released by Valve artist Drew Wolf. These, as of yet, have not been developed into official playable characters. We know many of the names of the mercs themselves. Scout is Jeremy. Demo is Tavish Finnegan de Groot. Heavy is Mikhail. Engineer is Del Conaher. Medic is Mr. Ludwig, Sniper is Mundy Mundy, and Soldier appears to be legally named Sergeant Jane Doe. An engineer sentry will damage him. This can be used by a crafty spy to lure an engineer into suicide, but a skilled engineer with the Wrangler can use this to his advantage and actually shoot himself in a similar way to a soldier or demo man, pulling off some insane tricks. There was a time where certain hats actually changed your stats. There was even a couple of combos where a hat, which could be bought on the in-game store, would purely buff your stats with no downsides, making their use arguably pay to win. This mechanic was eventually removed. The official pastime game mode wasn't originally developed by Valve, but by Bad Robot, the production company of filmmaker J.J. Abrams. Abrams and Valve originally talked about developing both Portal and Half-Life movies all the way back in 2013. At the time of recording, we're still waiting on those projects. Demo Man only has one eye because his eye socket is haunted, after an incident featuring the Halloween book The Bombonomicon. Medic has actually healed and returned the Demo Man's eye to full health multiple times, but due to the haunting of the eye socket, something always goes awry. Source Engine Bunny Hopping does exist in TF2, but requires extremely precise timing. And it's not just for fun, it does have some genuinely practical applications. Like, perfect bee hops after landing with a market gardener allow you to crit any time after you land, as long as you continue pulling off perfect bee hops. TF2 used to have a public beta version of the game alongside the live game between 2010 and 2013. Some updates tested in this public beta before making it to the real game, with a splitting of the equalizer into two weapons, 
and some brand new weapons were even revealed there, such as the Overdose or the Solemn Vow. There are of course some weapons that were tested in the beta that never made it to the real game, such as the idea of pocket weapons, items which got a crit boost when the medic healing you was killed. Due to rules around showing blood in media in Germany, all the German Meet the Team videos are edited to show the characters exploding into scraps of metal instead. There is a law-based explanation for why the teams are fighting. They are both employed by Redmond and Blue Tark Man to try and beat the other brother and consequently win the gravel contained within the land they're fighting on. The law doesn't try to explain respawns or how there are apparently multiple clones on both sides. The promotional hat from buying the TF2 official chess set, the Grandmaster, has a unique built-in killstreak mechanic added to the game before regular killstreak kits even existed. The chess piece hologram it displays on top will react and increase in rank depending on the player's current killstreak. Reloading a spy will actually reload your disguise's weapon. You can even use the reuse last disguise bind to switch your disguise's weapon to your current weapon slot. For example, when you disguise as engineer, you'll be holding his shotgun. But if you then switch to your knife and press your last disguise bind, D by default, your engineer disguise will now be holding out his wrench, a potentially very useful tool for really selling your disguise. There are official maps and even game modes which have been completely retired with no apparent explanation. For example, the robot destruction and arena modes, the latter of which was added all the way back in 2008, are no longer available in official playlists outside of seasonal community maps. There are several unused conditions still in the game which you can easily apply to yourself in a server with SV cheats enabled, such as literally transforming into a dispenser when you crouch. I wonder what exactly was being tested when they added this. <laughs> Thank you for watching.